In the next few minutes, you're going to learn the basics to analyze your own golf shots. Remember, swing adjustments are incremental, and they're based on your ball flight. The first is the height, and it's based on the loft of your club at impact, and the amount of spin applied. This starts as a static loft, but it can be changed by the angle of the shaft at impact. For simplification, the ball leaves the club at the angle of the face at impact. There are a lot of physics involved, but for simple diagnosis, we need to dumb it down just a little bit. You already know that adjusting the shaft angle with a press can lower the flight. Yep, playing it back in the stance or pressing the hands further forward does that. Wind and spin can make the ball climb to unnatural angles, but we don't want to complicate this, so we're going to ignore it. So now the ball's in the air. Let's get out the alignment sticks. Let's place them on the ground and place a ball right in the center. For all intents and purposes, this will be our club path. Just like in the drill, we'll align it to our feet. If you haven't seen this drill, this allows you to hit off the ground and it forces your brain to swing on the correct path. The fiberglass sticks prevent the club from grounding out during impact. The quality of the strike is audible. If you haven't tried this drill before, I'll place the card at the top of the screen. Now we're going to dig in a little deeper. Here we go. The path of the club as you swing it determines the path the ball leaves on. So if you swing straight through the ball, the ball leaves in a straight line down that line. If you swing outside in, the ball starts left. If you swing inside out, it starts out to the right. Great, done. No, because while the club sends it, the path, the face bends it by imparting spin. The primary source of spin is the club loft, but the secondary source is the face angle at impact. If the club face is slightly open, it will put right spin on the ball, causing it to curve to the right. If the face is closed, it will put left spin and it'll curve to the left. In reality, only a degree or two makes a big difference. For this video, I'm going to exaggerate the face of the club. So far, these first two levels are fairly simple. And they're simple because the club path is straight towards the target. Sometimes you'll hear the term zeroing out your swing. And this means having a club path and a club head that are both square to the target. It's these base calculations that a launch monitor uses in order to give you swing data. Level three. Level three is where all of this starts to break your brain. So if you need to watch this twice, I don't blame you. It took me months of playing with my launch monitor to come up with a way to simplify this example. Now for this last portion, we need to talk about alignment. Alignment is your foot position. Well, it's actually your hips and shoulders, but we use our feet to try to set those up. This is all way too complicated for this video because what we want to do, hit balls, let them fly, and then understand what we did to cause that. So, yeah, now the irritating part. I apologize in advance. We're going to clean this screen up a bit. We will infer our feet and sticks are our alignment. On the picture of the fairway, we're going to assume that our alignment is still the thin white line. Now the club head always bends the ball but the path sends it. So when your swing is outside in, the ball will leave to the left and come back right, even though the club head appears square. But here's the catch. The club head is square to your alignment and your feet and even the ball, but it is not squared to the club path and the club path is what matters. This is a sticking point for many new golfers. This is one of the reasons that they don't improve. They don't take the time to fix their club path and make sure they're swinging properly down the line. 
I realize some of this is complicated, so let's try something else. To make it a little easier to understand, I'm going to rotate the entire thing. Keep in mind, this is what happens when a golfer decides just to aim right and play it. So now, we're aimed to the right, coming over the top, pulling it left, and cutting it back right. Does that sound like a mess or what? The point here is that the ball leaves down the club path and then goes to where the face is pointing. If I make the angles more obnoxious, it's easier to see what's going on. The opposite is an inside-out swing, or a draw. This ball will follow the swing path and start out right, and then following the face at impact, curving left. The ball turns to the left because of the angle of the face at impact. It tends to apply left spin, curving the ball to the left. It may appear as if the face is square, but the face is square to your alignment, but not the club path. To the club path, the face is actually closed. Most players that play a draw play it in this fashion mainly because they don't have to adjust their alignment. Okay, now for the double cross. This is where it gets tricky. Now that we've dealt with the swing path and the face angle, there's one point where the ball goes the opposite direction. And I am not referring to the hosel shank. For this, I'm just going to show you the draw. And you may need to watch this a few times. The current graphic portrays a draw. The club face is 5 degrees closed to the club path. Remember that opened and closed of your club face is always relative to the club path. As long as the club face is closed to the path, it will always curve left. So if it's 5 degrees open and 7 degrees inside out, it's going to draw left. But there is a point where it will stop drawing left when the club path and face are at the same angle. This is a push. If the club opens even further, say 7 degrees open, it will start 5 degrees right, club path, and cut even further. This is a blocked out slice. This is where dead swings go to die. No offset club, no grip change, is likely to help once you start compounding your swing variables. So what's the answer? Well, the first step is try to fix your club path. Once you take your stance and choose your alignment, try to force the ball to lead down that path. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be within a few degrees to be consistent. The alignment sticks will help. You'll likely never get your swing to zero, zero, meaning zero degrees inside out or zero degrees open. You'll never likely get it perfect because this is an imperfect game. But there are ways to make it easier. When you use a press position, a pressed impact position, it's very difficult to turn your hands over before striking the ball. See, in that split second when you turn your hands over, your club head does this. And mechanically, you can't do that until the club head catches up to the hands. Now, in the animation, your swing path is perfect, and we've already realized that most people don't have a perfect swing path. So in this scenario, we're turning the hands over to square to the impact, and your timing becomes the most important part of your swing, and it's the first thing you lose when you're playing poorly. Don't get me wrong. Players that don't use a press, that flip their hands at impact, can really strike the ball well, occasionally. But if you want to be highly consistent and you want a small dispersion, flipping your hands at impact simply aren't going to do that. You need to press. Now, most of you aren't going to make it to this point, but I'm going to tell you that you don't really need a coach all the time to help you fix your swing. Watch the direction the ball leaves and watch where it ends up. That is your club path and your face. Thanks for watching. I don't think this video will get a lot of views. Drop a comment that you made it here. I'll draw from the list of users that leave a comment and send them a send hat. Thanks for watching. If you have a button, click subscribe maybe. Ciao.